Hi, I am the Apostle Brady Lee Hess. Good day to the rest of your forever. This message is about Bible evidence that Jesus is God and always was. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus is not God. The Mormons teach that Jesus earned his Godhood. Both are wrong. Both organizations are called cults by the mainstream churches. For more information about cults, see the website www.howcultswork.com. It is all about money for the leadership. Both the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons were founded by Masons, who also teach that Jesus is not God. There are many Satanists in the ranks of the Masons. Satanists say that Jesus is not God. I believe that if you have faith in Jesus, you can be saved, even if you do not believe that he is God. I did not know that Jesus is God when I first invited him into my heart, but I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit within me at that moment. Several months later, I was shown from the Bible that Jesus is God, and I readily accepted it. I think it is important to acknowledge that Jesus is God because to say that he is just a good man belittles him and does not give him the glory and honor that he deserves so richly. Colossians 1.15 states that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. We are not allowed to see the Father in heaven. The Father in heaven sends Jesus into the earth to act as a mediator between him and mankind. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus' mother Mary is a very righteous and special believer and worthy of much love, honor, and respect. But she is not qualified to be a mediator between God and man. She is not God, and she didn't die for our sins. Jesus is more than happy to answer your prayers if you pray to the Heavenly Father in his name. I think Mary has better things to do in heaven than to speak to God on your behalf. Genesis 3, 8, Adam and Eve heard the voice of God walking in the garden. This was Jesus. Exodus thirty three eleven. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. This was Jesus. In Joshua five thirteen through 15 Joshua has an encounter with the captain of the Lord's armies. He looked like an ordinary man, but he was the God-man Jesus. Joshua worshipped him with his face to the ground. Joshua asked him if he was for them or for their adversaries. The Lord said no. But the Lord and his warrior angels fought for Israel because it served God's purposes. In many instances, the Lord and his warrior angels fought for Israel when they were obedient to God. God gives special treatment to those who serve a purpose for him. How about you? Do you have a purpose for God, or are you just a consumer and a polluter? God takes really good care of me. I don't have a whole lot, but I have more than I need. Sometimes in the Old Testament, Jesus appears to people who are important to him and is referred to as the angel of the Lord. Angel means sent one. Jesus is sent into the earth to do God's work as well as the created angels who are obedient to God. He also appeared to King David and King Solomon. King Solomon married many foreign wives who led him and the nation of Israel into idolatry and brought the judgment of God on the nation. A visitation from Jesus is no guarantee of obedience. Hebrews chapter 1 speaks of Jesus. In verse 8, the Heavenly Father speaks to Jesus and says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The first chapter of the Gospel of John speaks of Jesus. Keep in mind the, the word that is mentioned here is Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And I'll skip down to verse 9. That was the true light, which the light of every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor by the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In verse 12 it says, But as many received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. At the resurrection, we will be transformed into the image of Jesus, who is God. We will be like God ourselves. We will be all-powerful and all-knowing and know all things that God knows. And we will just be like little gods. I'm not a Mormon. The Mormons have spoiled this idea for the rest of the church and given people a sour attitude on it. But we will be little gods. We can never be the creator or the savior, but we will have everything else that Jesus has. May God virtually bless you, my beloved.